<laughs> We're rearranging our chairs. <laughs> Well, uh, well uh, this gives me great pleasure to be here with Annie. Um, we've worked together for almost a quarter of a century, mostly a smooth road. She is, um, she, I've never met anybody who works harder, who devotes more to her art. And, um, you know, she's become the, the photographer of our age in the way that Avedon was of the previous age. For baby boomers to millennials, if getting your photograph taken by Annie is one of the great uh, totems of success in this country. Um, she's just an amazing person to work with. And she has shot three of the great iconic covers of the last uh, quarter century. And I think we should just open by talking about them a bit first. Listen, when you said, let's do this, I said to myself, I said, this was a great opportunity to um, sit and talk about Caitlin, maybe. You can do and, that. Um, because I hadn't really talked about Caitlin uh, anywhere. And um, coincidentally, uh, an art director friend of mine uh, that I've known for many years, you know, when Caitlin came out, um, he, said, he called me and said, Annie, you've, you've taken these three iconic covers you know, th throughout your career. It's amazing like, to do it once, but then to do it twice and do it three times. And I said, oh, this is great you know, for, for Graydon and, 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 and our talk. I'll just, we'll put them up and we'll look at them and then I put them together and I went, oh my God, everyone's like, no one has clothes on in these pictures. It's like, <laughs> it's like, I, I, I was like a little, I thought, anyway, so here we are. And, we're, and, and I, what's really important, and one of the reasons, you know, I, you know we're not, I'm not the most comfortable person in this kind of situation, um, but um, I really wanted to use this opportunity to say, yes, it was incredible to take these pictures. Um, and it was a privilege to take these pictures, you know, of, 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 of Caitlyn Jenner. Um, but, you know, let's, you are the person, the editor, who makes the decision, and in, 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 in the case of every, every single one of these covers, who, who, who goes out on the limb and publishes these pictures. And I, I would like to thank you for that. Oh, you're kind. Well, if we go back to, thank you, Annie, if we okay. go back to the first one, you had a very close relationship with Jan, and I think you should talk a bit about the day that you shot the, uh, the John and Yoko cover, because I don't think everybody knows the story here. It, it happened to be the same day that, um, that John Lennon w was murdered. And um, so I had, you know, gone to Len Lennon's, gone to their house, gone to their apartment in, in, in um, the Dakota and um, taken the photographs and had really had put them into the lab and then I got a call from Jan uh, you know saying that um, someone that, that matched Lena's description it was taken into Roosevelt Hospital and um, and we found out that that he had you know he'd been killed um, it was an amazing next series of days because um, we took Yoko said, you know, please go ahead, you know, publish these photographs. Um, when I went to take those photographs, Jan had particularly asked, he said, don't take any pictures of Yoko. We don't really, <laughs> we don't want to run a picture of Yoko. This is, this is, you know, John Lennon's story. And when I walked in, John Lennon said to me, Annie, I really want Yoko on the cover with me. You know, this is, our, this is double fantasy. This was this, this moment. And and I said, well, we better, th we better do something really good. <laughs> I don't know, we better think of something. Um, and we took this picture, we, we knew that in a few frames, we knew it was, it was really good. I, I, after John was killed and, and I went into the Rolling Stone offices, they were, they were mocking up a headshot of, of John for the cover. And, and I told Jan that, um, what John Lennon has said, and he said, um, you know, please, please put Yoko on the cover with me. And so he changed it. Do you know, I mean, it's funny, the, the one, yeah, they are, they're all without artifice, um, and there are no props involved in these. Do you have an idea that, that the picture you've just taken could be iconic over the ages after you've taken it, or does it take a while for that to gestate? No, I, I think it, it was, it was quite interesting with, with the John Yoko photograph because that was a photograph that became famous because of what happened. 
You know, it was a story. It's a great picture anyway. But it's, it's like a Bob Dylan song or something. I mean, it's just, it's just, it has a lot of, um, uh, you know, layers to it, and it becomes more, more important, um, you, you know, as the story, as the story develops. Um, the, each, each one of these covers are different in, in that respect. I think with Demi Moore, um, we, I had photographed Demi and, and, and Bruce um, when they, Demi, when she was first pregnant with, with her first child, and um, we had taken some beautiful nude studies. And then when Demi was scheduled to do a cover for, for Vanity Fair, at the last minute, um, you know, I said, Demi, let's just try, let's do some nudes for you of, of the baby. And then we looked at it and I said, you know, I wonder if this could be a cover. And um, it was actually Susan Sontag had called Tina up and said, you know, you really should run this as a cover. Now, we didn't know what we were doing. I mean, <laughs> we had no idea what was going to happen. You know, we, we had, we were not prepared. You know, I, I remember Demi, Demi Moore calling me up and saying, what should I say when people call me? I mean, I don't know what quite, you know, we weren't really thinking about um, what it meant and, and, you know, to so many people. Uh, and and that, that we had to sort of learn to be able to talk about it. Um, there was an avalanche of press after that. And I think the magazine put a piece of paper in the poly bag went to go on the newsstand to <laughs> cover her body, although you don't really see anything that, I mean, it's, uh, it's a beautiful, portrait and um, I mean it created it was such a huge thing probably one of the most parodied covers of all time as well I remember they used a version of that for Naked Gun 7 or Naked Gun 6 the version of that um, but did you knew was that originally going to be the cover or was that a last minute no it was it was originally I mean it was it was it was whether or not to go with it or not it was like you know um, you know but it's, it's a photograph that's copied over and over and over and over again, and that, you know, it makes me so happy to see, you know, to see it, um, to see it, you know, emulated and, and, and copied and, and done. And, I mean, really before then, you know, you, if you were pregnant, you were supposed to go sort of hide in a co corner and be heavily clothed and, you know, and, and, uh, and, and this was sort of a, um, a coming out in that, in, in that respect. Well, it sort of leads into the Caitlyn Jenner thing. And so there's, this is a long time being set up and, and it was, you know, cresting, it was a, a national uh, political sentiment that was just cresting at that moment and we had set it up. And why don't you talk about some of the stages that went through uh, and, and leading up to, and to the mood of that day. Should, should, we, should we run through some pictures while we're doing it? I don't know if you, if you want to show the... This is the we'll shoot that. that ran in Vanity Fair. Well, I knew... Um, I knew that this was going to be, um, I knew it wasn't going to be journalism, but I wanted to base it on, I, I wanted the foundation of, of journalism there. So we basically did it all in, in her house. And, um, and the idea was um, we would try on all, all these, all the clothes and, and, and go through it. It really was a two day session of, Emergence. I mean, she really did emerge, you know, um, over over the two days. Um, and, th and these are sort of chronological. That's that's one. That was one idea with the corset. Um, you know, I I originally wanted to be more conservative with her with her, and and one, <laughs> was looking at at photographs of uh, Catherine Hepburn, and I re I realized as I was doing research that that. Um, Whatever look she had was going to be an acquired look. You know, she, this this was an acquired idea of what is a woman, and you know, you had this, of course, expansive idea of you know who what is a woman. You know, I mean, you know, what should a woman look like? I mean, like how does a woman dress up? I mean, what who who is who is Caitlin? And you know, I, can we, can we stay on this a minute because um, this this probably is my journalistic shot, you know, and, 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 I, and I don't think I ever told you this, Graydon, but it was an important shot to me because towards the end of the second day when I sort of felt like I was being dragged behind a car because she just took over. <laughs> I mean, she is an Olympic athlete after all. But the first day she was very quiet. And then as she started to sort of bec gain her confidence, and I, and I do think that as much as we knew we were doing these photographs for 
uh, a magazine and, 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 and a cover, we were really, when you're in it, you are doing the photographs to make whatever she was hoping to be, you wanted that to be a success for her. And that is why I'm not really a journalist, is because you, I have empathy and I have, you know, have to make those decisions as, as we're doing it. But I think our whole team, and it was a team of people, really wanted it to be successful for her. And uh, we, we wanted to take her over, you know, over the hill. Now, I, I do think she has a, a, long, a long road still to go, um, but I think what she's done so far is, 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 is pretty amazing. And, um, but this picture, I like it because there was a moment in, in, in the second day when um, I think Kim Kardashian came over and she was, she was trying to get her children to come over to see her. She was so excited. And um, she, she went back into the dressing, dressing room and, and came out and I think, I think the hair and makeup might have started drinking at that point. And um, they, she came out a little bit more, you know, <laughs> you know than I thought was a, was a, a good idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that was this moment, and I didn't think I was ever going to run this. And then I just felt, you know, it's the one where you can really see her arms and you can see, you know, who she really is. Um, one thing it did, it, it sort of, even in this internet age, it, it, it showed that a magazine cover is still capable of creating, uh, being a, an iconic part of the culture. It, it, um, it was a, the biggest sort of cover we've ever had in a certain way. And I just want to go back a bit, because about 20 years ago, we started doing, I'm a big fan of group shots, and <laughs> we started doing uh, group shots in, in the uh, early 90s. And, um, and there were, we had Annie shooting some, and we had other photographers shooting some, but the other photographers, they'd put the short people in the front row and the tall people in the back row, sort of high school style. And, and then Annie, right from the very beginning, hers would be uh, composed like portraits of Dutch masters, that there was <laughs> light, that she'd had people sitting in for them to get the lighting right. And how do you compose a group shot of 20 people and get it right, knowing that they only have, you only have 15 or 20 minutes of their time. Well, actually, there, at a certain point, I, I remember great, and I, I, I said, I'm not going to shoot any more group shots if there are more than six people. I said, I said it was just, but of course, I, I, I've, I've, <laughs> I, I, broke, I broke that. Um, you know, I think because I, I'm not too sure the group shot um, is a photograph. And, um, and, and, I think that when it makes sense for it to be a group, um, you know, I, I, look, I look now at some of these, these photographs, like the Herb Allen, you know, groups, those were amazing photographs because they, they really are history. And, told you and, of a time. And, and, and then I realized that, you know, having done this as long as I've been doing it, that history is extremely important. And it's, um, someone has to do it, you know, and I've been doing it and I'm gonna continue doing it till, 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 till I keel over. So, so these group shots become more and more important because they really are a period of time. I mean, I look, I look at that picture from the Herb Allen conference with, you know, David Giffen sitting with, with uh, Kay Graham, and I, I weep. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're just, you don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. And th that is the power of photography. Well, David's still alive. Dave, no, David is still alive. I'm yeah. saying Kay Graham, yeah. But, the, when, oh. <laughs> um, um, but the, it's the way you compose them. You have sit-in, double sit-in for the people, don't you, and then to get the lighting right? So much of what you do is about I, I, incredible I tell you, lighting. We, we do, yes, I do sit people down and I do try to figure it out as best as possible because when, when, this, when the subjects come in, I, I really try very hard to spend as little time, get, you know, just try to do as fast as possible because I think the attention span mm -hmm. in a photograph is like <laughs> about, you know, like 10 or 15 minutes. I mean, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it can be longer than that, you know, um, but I, I, I don't believe that it should take that long. I think you should be able to, you know, That's um, because you've done your homework ahead of time. You've try to. It. You really try. Um, do you? I mean, this is going to sound like a silly question, but it, uh, we were talking about it in the car on the way here today. Do you prefer shooting men or women? Um, I think that's a silly question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do you prefer? <laughs> could you answer it in number the last? I mean, my, look, with Caitlin, I had you yeah. know, you know, <laughs> I had the best of both. It was great. Do you prefer shooting older people or younger people? You know, um, 
this is, and this is going to be a stupid answer, but, um, you know, I really like what I do. So it's like each person, I mean, I remember Penn saying, Irving Penn saying that he didn't want to photograph someone until they were over 65 because that's when their face becomes great and, you know, you can, but um, I don't feel that way. I, I, I feel like each, each, each person is, um, I mean, th this is why I must be still doing it because I still enjoy every, every single time I, I Almost every single time. Well, what's, what, okay, <laughs> look, it, 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 my, most of the work you do is on assignment, and once you have an assignment, what are the stages that go into the moment you take the, the before you take the, the, the picture? Can, can you bring up the Lena Dunham picture? Because I, I did have a, by the way, that picture of Lily Tomlin <laughs> with the hair, um, I took that picture. <laughs> it was actually done for Ms. Magazine, um, and Ms. Magazine at the, in, in its day, I believe that was in the 70s, um, they, were, they took themselves so seriously that, um, you know, I, I remember shooting Lily Tomlin, and I said, oh, Lily, do this, you know, and I, I took hair out of my brush and stuck it under her armpit, and um, of course, Ms. did not run that picture. Um, but anyway, um, so, so as you were talking a little bit about, you know, wh what happens. Um, well, let's say this this picture here. Why? Why? This is one of the. Well, you didn't run. The, you didn't run that picture. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> you, but you were. Well, there were no, so many good but, ones. But, but, but I'll tell you choose. why. You know, we we <laughs> we were going. No, it's 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 funny when you hear the story because I mean, and and you rightfully did not because it's a, definitely a little strange because we, Lena and I were going. She was just emerging as as, a, as an artist, and we we. Um, uh, we met at the, we, we said, let's do her on the Brooklyn Bridge because, I, you know, the Brooklyn Bridge is this great, iconic New York. It's Brooklyn, you know, it's, and, we'll, we'll, and it was raining and, you know, and, and um, we decided on her clothing, which would be her, her this is what she wore to her graduation. Um, this, this is Zach Posen dress and, and, um, and jacket. And, um, and I met her at the foot of the Brooklyn Bridge. I pulled up and it was, you couldn't, it was hard to get to it because there were, ambulances and fire engines and, and police cars. It was completely like uh, uh, surrounded by, and, and, and I, I went to her trailer and I said, Lena, what's going on? And she said, well, I think there's a jumper on the bridge, you know, on, on, the, Brooklyn, on the Brooklyn Bridge. And I went, oh, and then the person jumped. And so we, we were both looking at each other and our schedules are so bad. We said, okay, well, let's go ahead and try to take this picture. <laughs> And she stood, I, I think, you know, the body's like 20 feet away from, from us here. And she's standing there, but it, I can't look at this picture and not think about you know, the strange circumstances of what, what goes on, you know, in the, in, in the world here. Well, we, we shot, you shot. But you didn't run this one. <laughs> uh, we ran so many others, though. Yes. I mean, and, um, no, but you ran the one of her, her walking on the bridge. Yes. Um, the, um, Star Wars is a big film coming out this year, maybe one of the big films of the year, and you... Yeah. You've shot four Star Wars covers for us over the year, and I wonder if we should show that. Should we show this video that we have? It's a tremendous honor to have a photographer like Annie Leibovitz want to come to our set. It was incredibly exciting to see her experience a new generation and bring it alive on the page. These people, their lives, though they're in a galaxy far, far away, it's a journey that people can relate to. Hello, Mr. Abrams. Well, well, well. Oh my God, there you are. Hi, thank you for doing this. Star Wars is many things, but at the core of this story had to be the thing that makes any story work, which is the, the characters. And it was just that idea of this new young generation and that feeling of this brand new adventure, this brand new story, that would be a bridge between what we know and who we know and everything that comes next. Now this was a great cover. I loved this cover. This is everything a magazine should do. Uh, how do you, when you face with this, I think a number of them have been fold-out covers. How do you go in and make, say, something that's similar to what you've done before, different this time? Or is that conscious? Um, no, I mean, I, I think that that when I when I thought of um, going back into Star Wars this time, I um, knowing that they were going to use some of the. Um, some, some of the uh, earlier cast, and yet they had a, a whole 
um, whole new, they were developing a whole new set of, of new characters. Um, you know, I, I sort of made um, Harrison Ford my center, you know, because I thought it was the launching point, you know, um, and, and we were basically putting unknowns on, on the cover. And, and, and it was easy to, you know, and then to be on that, uh, that spaceship, the, the spaceship, you know, his, his um, with those iconic characters, um, you know, anything else, you could build anything else around it. And um, anyway, it's, it's, been, it's been, it's amazing that I, the, over all these years to, to be on all these different sets. Um, um, and knowing the people, I just wanted to ask you, do you remember the first photograph you've had that was published in Rolling Stone? The, the very first yeah. photograph? Um, yes, it was, um, they, they actually made it a cover. Um, Jan was away. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it was um, a, a photograph He's so rarely of, away from of, the a, office of a demonstration. Too. Sorry? He's so rarely away from the office, too. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. And it was of? But it was, uh, no, no, there, I, I was at some, um, I was still going to school. I was going to school at the San Francisco Art Institute. And, um, and I went to a demonstration where, where, you know, Allen Ginsberg was smoking a joint and there was, it was a peace, gener uh, you know, uh, demonstration. And, um, and while Jan was away, they, they did a whole uh, issue on, um, you know, the, you know, the war and, and, and everything, and they ran this picture, and, and I was just, like, in shock, you know, that it was, it was. <laughs> so you've taken pictures since you were a, a young child. Your parents bought you a camera, or you bought a camera? No, I mean, not, I, it, on cross actually, I, journeys. I went, actually, I went to the San Francisco Art Institute as a painting major, and I took a night class in photography. Um, you know, I, I was, uh, I was a kid, and um, a pretty un, un, unform, unformed person, <laughs> basically, and, but the the Art Institute at the time was going through the Vietnam War and and, and, and uh, not not the Art Institute itself, but you know the San Francisco you know the day of um, peace and love were over and um, and the painting department was 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 scary. Mm -hmm. It was like you know the, to sit by yourself as a young person in the in the painting department and paint and everyone was the abstract was 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 very rough and um, and I found a haven in the photography department where um, it was more communal and people were, you know, talked more and also, you know, as a young person with a camera to go out and take pictures, um, it, it, it sort of helped you get out <laughs> and see. We're gonna go to Q&A Q &A in about two seconds yeah. if anybody wants to ask, ask a question. I, I found that, I, I, are you more comfortable with a camera in your hand than with nothing in your hands? Um, not so in, not so anymore. There was a time in, in, in my younger years, I mean, I've been doing this for over 45 years, but it, when I was younger, I, I, I had to have my camera. It was, I was my camera. I mean, I, I looked all, out all the time and, and I, I took photographs. That's all I did. I, I never, you know, um, and I had to literally learn how to become a person, um, without the camera. Um, and, uh, I think having children really um, carries you over in that way. You you have to become more formed. Need both hands free. I, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was basically unformed, you know, basically until uh, until I left Rolling Stone and started to, um, you know, um, it, 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 sometimes you have to set that camera down. Yes. When you're out with your kids, do you take a camera or do you shoot on your iPhone? I shoot on my phone now. You, well, you told me a while ago, this was maybe three years ago, that almost anything you do with the big equipment you use, you could do with an iPhone at this stage or a, a cell phone. Almost. I mean, I was really impressed when I was on the Star Wars set to see J.J. Abrams walk around with his, with his iPhone and use it as a, um, you, know, for, for, you know, for how to frame. And I, I was so impressed with that that I immediately went back and, I've, and I've been, we, we just went to Cuba and photographed Rihanna. And, um, and I wish I had done more of it on, on the iPhone. I actually literally, um, one of the backgrounds in the blue, in the blue bedroom is, is an iPhone um, That's photograph. interesting. Yeah. And, but when you're, and uh, when you're shooting a crowd scene, do you, a, a big camera is better than an iPhone? You know, when Brianna, there was all those people. I haven't, I haven't tested the iPhone enough. I just got the new one. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I wanna immerse myself more in it. But I, I do think, 
Um, it, it's, <laughs> you know, the only difference between, well, there's lots of, I mean, if you want to take a photography seriously, you want to be a serious photographer, you, it's, just a, it's certainly more work, but the, you know, it, when I first started taking pictures, to have a camera, that was the difference, whether or not you had the camera with you or not. So, so the fact that you can carry that iPhone with you and have it with you, and it has such ease, mm -hmm. um, it's, just, um, it's, it's, just, it's just incredible, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. There's a, there was a gentleman up here, or oh, this right here. Um, I want you to elaborate more on the journalistic part of that you're not a journalist, although you create journalism. Obviously, that Caitlin picture created a lot of journalism. Um, when you said you have too much empathy, as someone who doesn't have any empathy, um, <laughs> I, I'm just curious uh, how you, if you want to sort of go to a different place sometimes and take a tougher picture. Well, I, I mean, I, I think when I, you know, one of the great things about being able to do this over this long period of time is that when I started, I, I felt more inclined for, to, to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. and, and I really felt myself that in order to be a journalist, you had to be, a, a, you, you had to say obje objective. And um, you have to remember, I was in the middle of gonzo journalism, you know, with you know, Hunter Thompson yeah. and Joe Estrise, Estrahouse, and, and I had quite a upbringing, um, quite a school, um, you know, um, and, um, and I began to realize that um, it wasn't, I, I was still putting myself into my pictures and they were, they were, they were sort of personal and I, and, I, and I realized I had a better, um, my photographs were better if I had a voice, if I had a point of view. And, um, and it is a bit gonzo, you know, and, um, and, and I, but I have great respect for journalism. I, I think it's, <laughs> there's definitely a place for journalism and we need journalism. Um, I, I feel much more comfortable being a portrait photographer because I can launch myself off from journalism. I, I, I respect journalism so much. I, um, but you call yourself a portrait photographer, do you think? I, with the quote. I call it portrait photography now. I mean, God knows what it is. I'm not too sure I'm a photographer anymore, you know, with all the digital compositing and everything that's going on. I mean, it's, it's, um, I feel more like a conceptual artist using photography. You know, more than, more than being a photographer. We're, I mean, it's an exciting and interesting time. We're going to wrap it up. I mean, uh, actually, Annie is also a great journalist. I will say that. <laughs> and the person who's probably taken more great photographs in the last 50 years, um, you don't have an Instagram account. I know. I, I guess because I, I have a place to place pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why we're in business, <laughs> and because we're in business. But I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it'll, it. It'll be huge. Wanted to thank you, Annie, and, and thank, thank you, you all. We're going to break for lunch. We'll see you later. Sure.